Welcome back to Echo Ridge and a quick look here at Angry Forest Incorporated. Currently, Angry Forest Incorporated only employs 110 workers, but in order to unlock the next level, we need 150. We also need to produce a little bit more resources. And we're going to need to do that because I'm going to need to pay for a very expensive bridge to connect the two sides of Ridge City. Plus, there's all the road costs and just milking every penny out of our economy is not going to quite do it. As it stands right now, we're only making $730 per week. And we could be doing a little bit better, except Angry Forest Incorporated is in the red. But in order to get some of the buildings that could help make us more profitable, we need to level up. So to do that, we're going to start by putting down a couple more fruit fields, and then we're going to put down yet another greenhouse. Because doesn't it look nice when it's all matchy-matchy? Hey everyone, Editor Echo here. Immediately following this clip, you're going to hear a pretty significant lisp that is being caused by my brand new Invisalign braces. I wasn't sure how it would come out when I was recording it, and needless to say, I'm here to talk to you about it because, well, I can hear it, so I know you're going to be able to hear it. The dentist tells me the lisp is supposed to go away in just a few days. I'm only supposed to have them on for a max four months anyways, so we're going to go ahead and see. But instead of being embarrassed by it, we're just going to go ahead and lean in. So look for the count in the bottom right to see how many times my mouth is still getting used to having plastic inside of it. The end state? Well, me feeling a little bit more confident about my smile. So once again, I appreciate your patience as well, quite literally, my mouth learns how to speak again. Now, as it stands, our two power grids are separated. We have one operating off of this one wind turbine that runs our sort of industrial area. And then we have the coal power plant that's running the rest of the city. But as you can see, some of the residents are saying they're not getting enough power. This is despite the fact that we are definitely producing enough. And some folks in the comments on the last video suggested that this may happen because the game doesn't really like to operate off of two different grids. It likes sort of one grid to rule them all. So just to make this process a little bit easier, we're gonna connect the two and then we're just gonna pretend that the agriculture area is running off of this wonderful wind turbine. And as soon as we do that, all the power notifications go away. And it didn't take much longer after we put in those additional crop fields and voila, we've now reached level two with Angry Forest Incorporated. And this is important because now we have something we can do with all the crops to include the flour mill and the bakery. But in order to provide enough workers for that new industry, we're gonna need to add a little bit more residential. Not a big deal, we've just expanded our ever-growing grid. Little residential here little residential there, a little bit here, and a little bit there. They seem to be belly aching for a little bit more commercial, so we'll add some here as well. Now, the ultimate goal here is a wonderful industrial bakery, but the bakery requires animal products, crops, and flour in order to function. But once we have all those, it's going to be an instant profit situation. First step is putting down a flour mill. A flour mill takes crops and turns it into flour. Pretty easy. It can do that at a rate of 4,000 units per week. Unfortunately, it's gonna cost us 15,000. Not a big deal. We have a small bankroll right now. Now I'm gonna put this flour mill right here off of Lady Rough Drive. For the simple reason, Lady Rough Drive is eventually gonna connect with this highway. And the better our connection, the better the whole industry is gonna work. So it's gonna be kind of important. Now on that production rate, you can see that one of these small fruit fields is producing almost 5,000 units per week. In other words, if we only put down one flour mill, we'll be wasting a lot. In fact, we could put down two flour mills and still be wasting a lot of crops. So we're gonna do a little bit of take two steps forward to take one step back. Step one, get rid of all these extra crop fields. We don't need those anymore. We have all the workers we need. And I think we're just gonna build a couple flour mills right across from the crop fields. Oh, very nice. Remember, this is not small town agriculture that we're shooting for. We're shooting for huge industrial sized agriculture. I'm also gonna try to do some leveling here. This always ends. Oh no, look what I did. That is definitely not what I intended. I was gonna try to shoot for some wonderful leveling here, but this always ends poorly for me. And as you can, oh, there it goes again. Why doesn't this work? Level and area. Click with the secondary button to choose the target height. Okay, target height has been selected. Oh, there we go. <laughs> ah! Learning is occurring, folks. I forgot to right click. Not a big deal. I told you guys it'd been a while since I'd played. It was just a random sinkhole that appeared near our flour mill. No big deal. I mean, that looks a little better, right? 
Now, every once in a while, one of the flour mills says they don't have enough crops. And it's not because they actually don't have enough crops. It's because once these fields produce whatever crops they're producing, they're sent away. Whether that be sold outside the city or stored in a wonderful little grain silo. So just to make sure we have enough storage, we're going to add another grain silo right here. Now look, it gets a little awkward and funky for the trucks because Andy Drive is not very big. So let's go ahead and upgrade that as well. We're going to use the standard road here because Angry Forest Incorporated is all about the bottom line. If people don't have nice pretty sidewalks, they don't care. They're all about maximum flower output. And for our efforts, we are rewarded with a beautiful 95% average traffic flow. Oh, make that 96. And look at this. Now we're starting to see some serious profit. Looking at our flow here, it looks like we're producing about 13 tons worth of crops. Some of them are going out the city and some of them turning into flour, which are then also being sold. Crops by themselves are not the moneymaker. The flour though, that's big time. But remember, our bakery is also going to need some animal crops. It just so happens we have a nice small animal pasture. Having a nice animal pasture sitting right by the wind turbine seems like a pretty good idea. Now in this first one, we're going to have some wonderful cows because who doesn't like a few moo-moos? The second one, it's gonna need to look a little different. Maybe we'll do pigs. And we have a potential production rate of 2,400 units per week. So when we put down our wonderful cattle shed, that's gonna take all those wonderful moo-moos and turn them into, we're just gonna say animal products, you can see that our production rate is only 3,200 units per week. So it looks like we could use about three fields to two cattle sheds. In fact, I'm not 100% digging this layout, so I think I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments here. And with that, I think Angry Forest is gonna go ahead and buy a little bit more land. Not gonna be too much, but we need to make sure that the new animal division has enough space. Then we're gonna put down some nice animal fields. Oh, look at this. That's a little too basic for my taste, but it's a good thing because we also need to make a room for these wonderful barns here. I wish I could flip these a little bit. Okay, apparently the barns are 12,000 a piece and we just don't have enough money. And now that I've already spent it, they're only willing to refund me nine. That's not very nice. And look at the army of trucks coming to start filling up our wonderful animal pastures. Oh, it looks like we need a little bit of water too. And now all the Moo Moo's have something nice to drink. Now don't you worry about these wonderful little cows. The animal products that these cows are making is milk. These are dairy cows, folks. Now right now the production rate for our animal pastures are about 2,500 units per week. Of course, they all say that, so I don't think we're getting that maximum throughput especially considering we don't have enough workers. Oh dear goodness. Apparently there's a sinkhole forming somewhere. The ground has become unstable and parts can collapse and create sinkholes. Anything in the sinkhole area is destroyed. A sinkhole has occurred somewhere in the city. Stay out of harm's way and contact authorities with any information. I thought I was the only one who could make some sinkholes. That's not a big deal. We'll just bring over some buckets of dirt and fill it back in. Look at this. No sinkhole anymore. Nothing to worry about here, folks. Sinkhole, what sinkhole? Now, after just a little bit of playing with this wonderful tool, it's like the sinkhole never even happened. So anyways, what I was saying before the wonderful sinkhole emergency happened, we need more workers. And I don't wanna add any more residential quite yet. Well, I know of a great way to get some more workers. All of you wonderful folks now have to go look for another job. And it just so happens that Angry Forest Incorporated has plenty of positions open. I know it's a little sad, but remember, we don't want all this dirty industry in Ridge City. Unless, of course, you're making flour, and then it's excused because you're bringing in the bacon. So I just heard from the executives of Angry Forest Incorporated, and they said they still don't have enough workers. So we're going to add another row of residential. I am looking forward to starting to get into some of the high density stuff, but unfortunately, you have to hit a population of 8,000 before that happens. And once again, Angry Forest is in the red. Because right now, we're just taking all those wonderful um, gallons of milk and selling them outside the city. It also looks like we're importing some crops. That's not going to do at all. Our production rate on our small fruit fields are about 5,000 units per week. And we have three fruit fields. That's 15,000 units. Well, this flour mill here can only process 4,000. As can this one. So if anything, we should be exporting, not importing. And look at this. We're now a boom town. We've unlocked some airport areas, another tile, some more transportation methods, that'll be nice. The ore industry, more policies. 
Oh, and finally, some of the highways and intersections, not to mention a bunch of new buildings. But more importantly, it's going to allow us to build this connection right here. Now, right now, we're producing 10,000 gallons of milk in this cattle shed or um, dairy refinery has a production rate of 3,200 units per week, which tells me we need three cattle sheds. Here is our wonderful three cattle sheds, and they look awfully ugly and samey. But don't worry, eventually all these are going to be upgraded with higher production buildings. All right, I've had an epiphany. These cattle sheds aren't actually what I thought they were. They're not processing any cattle. They're taking crops and making cattle. But it also explains why we're using so many crops and having to import some. Because all these wonderful cattle also need crops. So let me uh, adjust a couple of things here. So now we're taking crops and we're making flour. And we're also taking crops and making milk. Yes, we're still on that party line. And it looks like we're importing about 15 tons. So we're going to add a couple of wheat farms somewhere in Angry Forest Incorporated. That way we're not importing the food that we're using to feed the cows. I mean, this seems like a nice area. And then we can even put in another wonderful small grain silo. That way the trucks don't have to go as far whenever the cows need more wheat. And apparently, while I'm concerned with the moo cows, the city needs some death care. And all we have access to is the cemetery for now, so we'll just throw one of these down somewhere. I really don't love these. It's a little bit too morbid for my play style. But the people need what the people need, so we'll go ahead and facilitate. I also just realized that we unlocked the small emergency shelter, the disaster response unit, and the short radio mast. These are sort of things that we need to put down just to make sure we're not going to get crushed by any future emergencies. And apparently the city wanted more than just people picking up their dead. They also wanted somebody to pick up their packages. So we've added a wonderful little post office. Now the post office is something that again, I'm not familiar with from the last time I played. But it looks like we have plenty of capacity. And here is apparently the wonderful post office budget. So art mirrors reality and will reduce the post office budget by 50%. We're also going to take the opportunity to throw down some elder care and a child health center. Now our last medical clinic is right here. And right next to it is a busy corner shop. And I'd kind of like to put the pediatric clinic right next to the regular medical clinic. So in comes the bulldozer. And apparently the child health center is a thick boy. It's bigger than the regular medical center. So we're stuck just putting it right there. Which leaves us a little bit of area here. So we will go ahead and rezone that commercial. And tell the busy corner shop that they are more than welcome to come back. The last thing that we unlock that the city is clamoring for is the elder care facility. Now the elder care facility is 22,000. So we need to find a nice space for it. There's some sort of quote out there that I can't quite remember that says, you can judge a lot on a society based on how they treat their older people. And considering one day I'm gonna be an older people, I wanna make sure we take care of us pretty nice. There we go. There's a nice elder care facility. And the fact that the elder care facility is conveniently located right next to the cemetery is just a coincidence. And once again, a little bit too morbid for my playstyle. And it looks like we're hurting for power again. This time, I think we're actually going to put down another wind turbine. And before I can even do that, we've unlocked level three for Angry Forest Incorporated. We now have a lemonade factory, a milking... Uh-oh. If this is a milking parlor, what was happening to all the wonderful moo cows before? But as I was saying, we're going to put down another wonderful wind turbine because I'm sure this industrial area is using more than its fair share. Speaking of Angry Forest, now that we put down those two additional wheat farms, Look at this. All of the crops we're using is our own production. Look, it took us a little while to get it right, but now that we're there, we're making a beautiful profit of 1,000 per week. Now, I want to put down the milking facility for obvious reasons, but in order to do that, we're going to need some more crops because we don't want to import any because that affects the bottom line. And because I'm happy with the amount of cattle we already have, we're just going to get rid of one of these normal cattle sheds and replace it with a milking parlor. So here's the way this works. And you're just going to have to go with it. All the baby cows are raised in this building here. They're then brought over to these two fields where they're clearly having a great time, frolicking and eating. And then every once in a while, they're brought over into here where we gather up all their milk. That's exactly what's happening. Go with it. But on the subject of the wheat, our small crop fields were producing 4,800 units per week. Well, this medium can produce 8,000. So we're just going to supplement all of our wheat by adding one of these big guys and remove this one because, well, it kind of looked out of place anyways. And now that I'm doing that, I'm going to remove this one too and just add a couple of small ones right next to the medium one. 
It really just makes it look just a little bit better. And because Angry Forest Incorporated is going to need more workers, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of, I don't know, all of this industry here. I just realized this was on cotton before. And I'm pretty sure cows don't eat cotton. So we're going to change it back over to wheat. Now, when Ridge City last grew, we unlocked the lemonade factory. Unfortunately, it requires a little bit more materials than we have right now. So we're going to have to hold off on the lemonade. But we have our eyes set on the bakery. We have our animal products. We have our crops. And we have our flour. Now we just got to wait for 20,000 credits. Dollars. Euros. Franks. Yeah, I still don't know what to call them. And I'm definitely not calling them simoleons or sims or cells. Cells is the actual name that the game gives it to it, but that just doesn't make sense. Oh, look, the bakery's unlocked now. Now, the bakery is a big chungus building, but it is the cornerstone of Angry Forest Incorporated, at least for now. So we want it nice and close to the highway, and I think we can make that happen sort of right here, as long as we get rid of some of these power lines. We'll pause it because we're going to upset some people. You know what I just figured out? You know what's better than one bakery? Oh, no. No! Where's the earthquake gonna hit? An earthquake oh, is this occurring. is not good. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. You're not the boss of me. Oh, come on. Right when I was in the middle of putting down another bakery. On second thought, maybe this will make a nice little second river here. I really need to start getting working on that disaster recovery. So apparently when your town reaches Boomtown, they literally mean Boomtown. And this is when all the disasters start unlocking. So apparently the medical clinic is broken. I started adjusting its budget because we've been growing at a fairly good clip. Except the medical clinic says it has treated zero patients. But as soon as I adjusted the budget, everybody got happy and a bunch of buildings upgraded, which tells me they needed a higher budget. So why aren't people going to the clinic? And why are we out of power again? Our electricity budget's already at 120%. So we're actually going to reduce this back down to 100 and add another wonderful coal power plant. Now hopefully one day all this will be going away, but for right now, we need power. Angry Forest Incorporated City, I mean Ridge City, residents demand it. And I have bad news. Apparently you can't put down two bakeries. It's one of those buildings that is sort of unique and you're only allowed one of them. So Angry Forest Incorporated and their Go Nuts Donuts are going to have to suffice with one bakery. But look at that wonderful bottom line. We are going to be the donut capital of the world! Or at least the tri-state area. Now because all the donuts were being made so well, Angry Forest Incorporated wanted to give back by putting some farm workers' barracks in and around the area. And it has nothing to do with the fact that each barracks that they put down increases work efficiency by 5%. Absolutely nothing to do with it. In fact, they were generous enough not to put one, but two. Right here off of Bob Lane. Now I was going to leave this as Bob Lane, but I can't do it. I actually have to name the street or the road after the member that it's named after. Allow me to introduce the Farmers Workers Barracks Road, Bob Ate My Bob Bob Lane. So after the water levels have gone back down, it seems that we did not get our magical new river that we were sort of hoping for. So the fine folks of Ridge City have all pitched in with their shovels, and we're actually going to start making our own sort of river here. Now, how will this impact the environment around here by just sort of creating rivers while willy-nilly? We don't know. But the engineers over at Angry Forest Incorporated assure us that this is completely safe and has nothing to do with the fact that this is going to raise land values so close to the corporation's land. But it's like Angry Forest III used to say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade and then you bottle it and sell it. Now look at that. Doesn't that look nice? And it just so happens to be improving the land value around the river. And you never know when some new condominiums might pop up or some shopping malls. Okay, this is a problem. The only firehouse that we have is way over here on this side of the city. The executives over here thought they didn't need their local fire department, except now it's going to impact the bottom line, so they want to listen. And a fire station magically was built. With the fire out, it's time to turn our attention to some other profit-seeking methods, namely a highway connection. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I want to do this highway connection here, because I've been told by the very helpful comments below that when you do that, some commuters will just treat your city as sort of a through fare. And if we were going to have one of the roads that were going to act that way, we'd want it to be this sort of connection that we've been planning 
here on Miko Nala Ave. We've got a little bit of money in the banks thanks to the aggressive taxing of Angry Forest Incorporated. So I think the first thing we're going to do is upgrade Miko Nala Ave with a six lane road with a median. Oh, that just looks awkward, doesn't it? We'll eventually be able to fix it by upgrading this road as well. But as it stands, this is still considered outside of our city. Now, if we were to leave this alone, it would add a bunch of traffic lights all the way down Miko Nala. And I don't think we're sort of ready for that yet. So we're going to go back to some wonderful stop signs. We want the traffic flowing as fast as possible down this road. And we'll just put a nice stop sign here. Any place where they're trying to get on to Mikonala Ave. And now we need to duplicate this setup here over on this side. The most complicated thing is trying to figure out what road this is so we can match it with this one. Oh, that just looks hideous. We cannot leave that, right? Hold on one second. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad either. Now we just got to figure out how to get from point A all the way over to point B and still make it look somewhat attractive. So I think a good plan whenever you're doing this is to sort of start on the land and go over. Now, this is not how you want to do this because as you can see, that looks not great. So what we're going to do is come here and page up a little bit. Come here, page up a little bit more. And now you see we got a nicer looking road here. And now that we have that side down, we can start tapering it back. And even though you can't see it really well because I still haven't downloaded the mod that gets rid of all the ridiculous clouds, it's kind of a nice little bridge. I kind of wanted the double arch one though. I think that looks really good. Did I blow a lot of money by demolishing the last one? Yes. Is it gonna be worth it in the end? No. And do we have some serious road work to do to be able to connect these two? Absolutely. Okay, the curve on Mikonola Ave is not quite as subtle as I was hoping for, but I'm really happy with this bridge, huh? And I suppose the reason why it ended up like this is because I wanted to make sure that the bridge was as perpendicular as possible to the river. But this will be fun though. We'll have some interesting highways to be able to work our city around. Of course, we're making Buku Bucks. Right now it says 11k, it was 14k. It all depends when Angry Forest and Go Nuts Donuts sells all the pastries. So if you don't like the look of this cloudy bridge, let me know in the comments below. I'd also be really interested to hear what you're thinking of this series and if there's anything else you'd like to see out of it. I had a blast recording it and learning all about the bakery industry and I hope you did too. So until next time, happy gaming and I'll talk to you soon.